Good morning and welcome to Morning Scoop for Tuesday, March 2nd. This is your Daily Buckeye Fix. I'm Tom Moore. The Minnesota game is in 184 days. The game against Michigan in 270 days. A lot of times I wrap these shows up by talking about how fun and great the community at Buckeye Scoop is. Today's show is coming directly out of a conversation from that community. It started on our Ask the Insiders board on Monday, which is a great example of the kind of stuff we're talking about. Uh, the inspiration was Brian Sneed, who is the former Ohio State running back. He had three carries on uh, Saturday for Austin P, which is at the FCS level. Three carries for 186 yards and three touchdowns. If you're not familiar with football, that's pretty good. Uh, Kirk Barton is my guest today. He is the guy who started the thread on our Ask the Insiders board about uh, the great what ifs in Ohio State football. Uh, you know, uh, brought on by that Sneed performance. Kirk, even with as deep and talented as this running back room is this year, it sure would have been interesting to see what someone like Brian Sneed might have done behind the Ohio State offensive line if he was still on this team. Oh, God, I think he'd probably start. I mean, just looking at his talent and, you know, I just like having more competition in the room. You know, so when you had a guy like that who could run like that, because we've seen guys that come from lower levels or, lesser states that end up being really good running backs in the nfl and i mean he's going to get a crack at it you know if you're you know if you could run even at a lower level like i mean like ladanian tomlinson went to tcu which wasn't was never really thought of as like a as good of a program as it became you know like during like the andy dalton era but you know i I think he's going to get crack in the league and you know those numbers don't lie so it was was an impressive run by him now uh, that uh, that state performance sparked a really interesting thread about some of these great what ifs in Ohio State history. And it wasn't, you know, like, oh, what if Woody Hayes had taken another job? It was just guys who had an incredible ability, a ton of potential, and just never realized it for one reason or another. So you had a really good one that you shared. You got a firsthand view of it, a really highly highly touted tight end prospect who saw his Buckeye career come to an end uh, very suddenly due to an off-field incident, Louis Irizarry. Tell us about Louis. Louis is probably the most heralded tight end that we've ever recruited or at least in the last 20 years i mean no jeremy records something but i mean lewis was a different level of talent he was sought after by the hurricanes you know when they were in their glory years of tight ends of chalky winslow uh they wanted lewis to be the next kellen you know which was interesting because he was committed to ohio state then he flipped to miami and then he flipped back to ohio state which was wild um and he flipped to miami after they you know, showcase Kellen was on the championship game. They flipped over, then he flipped back. But he, um, super talented guy. He was a pain for Bobby Carpenter and those guys to cover in practice. Uh, I remember he'd always be getting in fights. He's a tough kid and super athletic. Um, I mentioned in our mm-hmm. Ask the Insiders thread that Trust put in a tight end reverse for him, which, you know, that's unheard of, especially in Trust's offense. But he was that kind of athlete. And, you know, he had, uh, Two off the feet issues. He had a like an assault charge during the season. Got suspended for a good chunk of the season. And then in spring ball, right after spring ball, he got him and Ira robbed somebody of their buck ID and some idiotic stuff. And he got kicked off the team for good. And he had to go to jail for a little bit. And it was weird because I saw him in, in 2007. He played for Youngstown State. Came back to the shoe, and they threw him a ball like on a little tight end screen, and he looked slow as molasses. Sounds like. Wow, I was like, you look nothing like you did. So, moral of the stories, kids: if you're talented, don't go to jail because you lose a lot of that talent. There's no, uh, there's no weight rooms in the jail. <laughs> that, that's actually good life advice, even if you're not talented. Yes. Sage. Uh, the the other guy you mentioned there, uh, Ira, is Ira Guilford. He was a running back out of uh, Northeastern New Jersey, who uh, I will confess I watched during some of the practices in 2003. I guess summer practices, and I went, oh man, this kid is the this kid is the real deal. And then. Uh, he was gone uh, before the end of the year as well. So that uh, that's another another one of those uh, kind of like, an, oh, yeah, that guy kind of like, oh, yeah, I remember him. But, my, but, my recruiting class was the greatest example of that maybe ever. Because you already mentioned, you mentioned Darius Hiley. You know, I mean, Soup, Soup, his nickname was Soup, like Superman. Five-star, all-world, basically created Glenville, the whole Glenville thing. Um, and he was actually a year younger than Troy Smith, but everyone says like Darius has gotten started because he started as a freshman and, you know, just never made it. I mean, a lot of these guys, they, it's, it's usually an off the field issue or multiple off the field issues that get them out of, uh, get them out of there. But like Darius, um, he was a guy that I 
first saw him at the Northwest All Star Game practices, which is like a high school All Star Game they do in Ohio. And I'm like, oh damn, this! Is, I heard this kid's like legit, 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 like five star, all world. He's probably the highest rated guy in the game by like a country mile. Like Lewis here has already played in the game. Like we, we had a, I mean, it's a much more talented roster than there is now because we couldn't enroll early. You know, we couldn't enroll in June like most of the guys do. So back in the day when I played in June, you played in the North South game, in July you played in the Big Thirty Three game, and then you showed up to Ohio State. So it's like those are like your summer workouts, but. First hit pads, I'll never forget. We put Anthony Gonzalez and Ryan Robinson, this kid that went to Miami, Ohio, ran past soup like five times. Like, I mean, on go routes, like soup was playing DB and Ryan just dis- destroyed him. And it was so bad. And I was like, this is the guy that's like, you know, all world, like all everything. And this Matt guy's running past him. And I'm like, kind of scary. And then Darius literally goes over to the golf cart and sits there, takes his shoes off, and sits on the cart for the rest of practice after he got scorched like five times. And we're sitting there like, is this for real? And then that night, he books a Greyhound bus home to Cleveland and just leaves the game, like out of the blue. And I was like, they're like, yeah, Darius quit. And I was like, huh? How do you quit an All-Star game? We're only here for five days or whatever. It's like, Five days practice game. That's it. But he literally booked a Greyhound and went home. So that was when I knew that the legend of soup might just be just that and just be a legend. But it was kind of an eye opening experience, Tom. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> yeah. To, to be called Superman at a school that, you know, had a Heisman Trophy winning quarterback that produced the year before you and <laughs> uh, Ted Ginn the year after, like, all right, that's, that's pretty intriguing. Um, yeah, he, he came to Ohio state, he redshirted and then he had great issues. So he never actually got on the field at Ohio state. So that's, uh, yeah. you know, he's, he's probably another one of those. If you're, if you were of a certain age, that's a name that you go, Oh yeah. Darius highly. Uh, oh, and yeah, yeah another- our, our hardcore recruit next absolutely know that name. I mean, cause that yeah. was like one of those ones. Cause that's like one where you get that kid, you're celebrating. You're like, Oh my God, we just got this lockdown first round corner, or he's going to be Randy Moss at receiver, and it just nothing. Didn't get a single snap of him in his Ohio State career. <laughs> yeah, another guy who was who was kind of a uh, a big name. Who you, you don't have to be a hardcore recruit Nick to remember this one. Uh, running back out of uh, the Youngstown area by the name of Maurice Claret, who Ohio State got uh, one yeah. year out of. You know, and you know you were you were there for the uh, the very very end of the Maurice Claret era at Ohio State. Uh, I mean, a healthy Maurice Claret probably means another national title for Ohio State in 2003, maybe. And then, you know, how big a difference would that have made on the 2004 season, your your redshirt freshman year of 2004, when, you know, there, there were a bunch of issues on that team, but uh, not having a running back they could lean on was definitely right right near the top of that list. So how big a difference would that have made having Maurice Claret there for 2003 and 2004? I mean, I in 03, I mean, we would have been preseason number one. You know, we lost to Wisconsin, we lost to Michigan, and we just didn't have an impact guy at running back. And, you know, it's hard to win in college football, especially back then, without an impact running back. And, I mean, Mo was all that, and he was unbelievable as a difference maker. It's tough. But, you know, he got caught up in the mix. I mean, I remember being there, and he's on, like, the set of college game day, and he's rolling up in, like, an orange navigator. And I'm just like, Jesus, God, what are we doing? <laughs> and then... <laughs> Andy got, you know, like he's fighting with Andy Geiger and you know, Jim Brown is in the football facility to like make, to have like a peace talk with Jim Trestle. And I'm just like with Maurice, I'm just like, it was just like the circus was in town. I mean, I was, it was weird because as a freshman, you know, we were awesome on NCAA football that year because we had Gamble. It was like a 99, Maurice Claire, it was like a 95. Like, I mean, we were unbelievable. And I'm thinking, I'm like, God, we're about to win next year. I'm going to get a ring my freshman year. Like, this is great. I don't have to do anything. I don't have to play. Like everyone's, everyone's all good, but it just didn't, uh, it wasn't meant to be, man. It's, it's sad. It's like when you're a kid like that, who could have been Archie Griffin 2.0 and it's not, it's, it's sad, but you know, people, they get short sighted and they want instant gratification and it, it costs them a lot because he could have been, could have his jersey retired, come on the Heisman. Another national championship, beloved by the Ohio State community, and it all kind of just went up in smoke, so to speak. 
Yeah, he he never uh, never got another carry in at any any uh, level, college or uh, NFL, after the national championship game against Miami. That was not mm-hmm. uh, not how I thought his career was going to end at that time. Mm-hmm. He was also not even the number uh, the only running back in that 2002 class that had a, a kind of sad end to his career. Uh, Bruchon Humphrey. Um, this is a very tragic story. If you don't remember this one, he was uh, a another like top 100 running back. He and Claret were. I mean, th- that was going to be the running back duo that set Ohio State up for years and years to come. He had a, an undetected heart condition and uh, passed away uh, just while playing basketball. Just pick up basketball uh, during you know up in his uh, hometown of Toledo. You know, he he's another one that you know even if Maurice Claret left, he could have been a difference maker for some of those teams. Another uh, very, very sad story. This is this is the one that I, I think of every time I think of a, a what if with Ohio State football is Jason Gwynn, who uh, he's a little a little before uh, the time that of some of the guys that we're talking about here. He was a redshirt freshman on that 1993 team. He had five tackles for loss and two sacks against Indiana in uh, kind of mid-November 1993. And that was a game that was close. That was not Ohio State being up 56 to nothing. And, uh, you know, he's yeah. playing against the scrubs. That was a close game. Five tackles for loss, two sacks for a redshirt freshman. He died in a car accident uh, on uh, Olentangy River Road just like a month later. And uh, there, there's, there is a uh, – they dedicated the, uh, the Holiday Bowl win to him uh, after – and that was uh, kind of in December of 1993. But, yeah, that, that's another – you know, you, you put that pass rusher on the uh, 1994, potentially 1995, and even 1996 Ohio State teams – uh, you know, the, the margin, the margin of uh, error there for some of those teams was not very, not very big uh, in terms of how much they missed true greatness by. And uh, so, yeah, there's, that was another, that was another really sad, really tragic one. Um, wanted to end on one that was much, much less, uh, much less tragic, but just really interesting to me. Uh, two quarterbacks in the 2015 recruiting class, Torrance Gibson and Joe Burrow, both, both kind of what ifs in their own way. It was so interesting to me though, that and probably, I guess, indicative of where, how they were viewed at the time they, they signed and uh, enrolled at Ohio State. You know, one of these guys won the Heisman Trophy, was the number one overall pick in the NFL draft after leaving Ohio State. And it was the other guy who everyone was talking about as like, oh, man, can you imagine if Torrance Gibson had played out his career at Ohio State? Uh, I mean, for people who don't remember Torrance Gibson, can you, can you give people the uh, on the field Torrance Gibson uh, experience what what was that like uh, i mean he was basically randy moss i mean i had a guy that i really 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 trust and he's like he's the best athlete to ever play at ohio state and i'm like he ain't like better than joey galloway john springs some of these freak as always we've had yep he's the best one and i and i was stunned by that like absolutely stunned but you know it wasn't like it was the first time person's evaluated somebody i mean they've been around pro bowlers nfl hall of famers like big time dudes and so i was like i was stunned when he said that but yeah the kid was six two six three tall lean fast i mean we're running jet sweeps sweeps with him in that spring game and he looked unstoppable and yeah but again he got caught up in the mix you know something happened and you know it kind of is a classic story of a guy's million you know million dollars walking around broke you know, because he should be in the league, you know, playing receiver, playing it at a high level, getting paid. But, you know, some guys just they have issues, you know, and they're they don't they're not, you know, supremely you know, disciplined and they get caught up in a bad circumstance. And, you know, it, it stinks because like people are like, oh, well, he never could have done this or that. But I'm like, well, once you leave like the Ohio State infrastructure, you know, a lot of these guys just go off the rails, you know, because Ohio State everything's so tight. You know, the disciplines there, the strengths there, the nutrition's there, the coaching's there, the systems there, and you know, there's guys that go to like a JUCO where there's no system, there's no coaching, there's no nutrition, there's no uh, strength coach. You know, you've seen Last Chance U. It's like you know, if Torrance Gibson goes there, it's I mean, they're they're, they're looking at you know Greyhound tickets to go home every weekend, you know, and it's it's just not a good deal. But yeah, it was a uh, it was a shame. I wish you could have had betting odds that day or that you know signing day. Okay, which one of these guys is going to be the number one overall pick out of the two quarterbacks? And see if anyone would put a dollar on Joe Burrow over yeah. Torrance Gibson. But that's the funny thing about recruiting is, man, until these guys show up and prove they can do it on the field, I mean, you get excited because you need talent. But man, 
you know, I, I've just seen a lot of guys succumb to the lifestyle of college. And most of you older guys know exactly what I'm talking about. A lot of these guys can't handle it. And it, uh, you know, a lot of these guys evaporate before they ever really make an impact. Yeah. And uh, what other, one other just fun, interesting side note there. Uh, you mentioned Randy Moss there. He was not ever, I don't think, seriously looking at Ohio State or, or too seriously looking at Ohio State. Ohio State did, however, have Randy Moss's older brother, Eric Moss, yeah. who was an offensive lineman back in the early 90s. So yeah. that's a that's a whole I'm sure that'll be a fun. That would be a good <laughs> one to get Bill Green on to talk about, because Bill Green probably remembers the Randy Moss recruitment. Um, that was a uh, little little before I was covering recruiting. But, uh, yeah, that's yeah. Uh, another another fun one. And, and, you know, these have all centered around the last 30 years or so. Obviously, there are a million of these stories throughout uh, Ohio State football history. If you want yeah. to weigh in on that, the uh, this is, as I mentioned, all part of a uh, thread on our Ask the Insiders board. I'll link that in the post on the front page of the uh, of the site when this podcast goes up. And you can join the conversation, share your own what ifs on the Ask the Insiders board there at BuckeyeScoop.com. That is just one of the perks of being a member of the site. Our Nevada Buck is dropping a ton of fascinating nuggets right now. He had a... Uh, a couple good ones yesterday. One of them was uh, another one on Big Ten expansion, and we had one on uh, the uh, how the TV end of things is playing into how things may shake out this fall with regard to some of the COVID protocols, some of the things that may be changing. Really, really interesting stuff. That's uh, that's something that I, I, you know, everyone's obviously asking about. The answers are on the Ask the Insiders board at BuckeyeScoop.com. So consider becoming a member today, and then hey, you'll know you'll know all this stuff. You'll have the answers to all this stuff. So. Uh, you can do that at BuckeyeScoop.com. Also, make sure you check out all of our great podcasts on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, SoundCloud, Spotify, Spreaker. I think that's all of them. Wherever fine podcasts yeah. are sold, you can find them. Just search Buckeye Scoop, uh, Buckeye Scoop to find them there. You can subscribe to make sure you get them automatically downloaded to your phone. And also leave us a five-star rating or review while you're at it. That will help other folks find those shows as well. That'll do it for today. Thank you guys for joining us. Have a great day. We will talk to you tomorrow.